Hello and welcome to the BS Academy. We hope that your preparation is going well. So let's start the next video. Let's begin with the first chart which includes the fluid properties then after the fluid statics and the third one is fluid kinematics. Before that if you are new to your academy then please subscribe for the coming videos and the links for the short notes which are in the description box. Let's see one by one first one is the fluid properties. In fluid properties there are some properties for that you have to remember their equations as well as their MLT dimensions. So here first one is density which is equal to m by v. Then dimensions for the density is equal to m1 l minus 3. Then for specific gravity dimension is m0 l0 t0. Then for specific weight and bulk modulus there are two equations are there. First one is for gamma is equal to weight by volume. So gamma is equal to mg by v which is equal to rho into j. For bulk modulus, k is equal to volumetric stress divided by volumetric strain. Here units are also important. So for the specific weight, unit will be Newton per meter cube and for bulk modulus, unit will be Pascal or you can say that kg per meter into second square. Then after fifth property is compressibility which is equal to alpha, alpha is equal to 1 by k and dimension is m minus 1 l1 t2 then Grassoff's number gr is equal to bg delta t into l cube by mu square where b proportional to 1 upon t then for coefficient of volumetric extension beta is equal to 1 upon v into del v by del t at p and beta is also equal to minus 1 upon rho into del rho by del t at p and dimension is m0 l0 t0 theta raised to minus 1 then viscosity mu is equal to tau into mu into du by dy and velocity gradient phi is equal to du by dy which is equal to meter per second by meter so unit will be s raised to minus 1 means you can say that second inverse and d is equal to m0 l0 t raised to minus 1 and theta raised to 0 then sigma t is equal to newton per meter then here tenth one is kinematic viscosity mu is equal to mu by rho and meter square per second which is equal to 10 raised to 4 strokes here one stroke is equal to 1 semi square per second then d is equal to m0 l 2 t minus 1 and uh, Kinematic viscosity for water is equal to 10 raised to minus 6 meter square per second and for air 10 raised to minus 5 meter square per second. Then Newton's law of viscosity here shear stress proportional to rate of shear strain or you can say that tau is proportional to d phi by dt or du by dy. So tau is equal to mu into du by dy then here unit of mu is equal to newton into second per meter square then mu is equal to 10 poise and uh, shear stress tau is equal to newton per meter square then 14th is the dynamic viscosity for a moving plate mu is equal to 4 into t into delta by pi w d cube h here effect of t on viscosity number 11 now as you increase the temperature the row of liquid will decrease and for air with increase in temperature the row will increase and mu is proportional to under root t for ideal gas and mu is proportional to t raised to n for real gas here two diagrams are also there now the next topic is for non-newtonian fluids time independent and time dependent two types are there now in the time independent plastics there are bingham plastic then speedo plastic and dilatant plastic for bingham plastic n is equal to 1 and beta is not equal to 0 then naturally behave like solid if tau or shear stress is less examples are like toothpaste then gel then drilling mud and sludge then in the pseudo plastic mu is lesser and n less than 1 beta is equal to 0 
Examples are like paper pulp, then rubber solution, lipstick, paints, ketchup, blood, and polymetric solution. Here, the third one is dilatant. For that, n greater than 1 and uh, mu is higher, then b is equal to 0. Now, examples are like butter, quicksand, and starch. Then, after time dependent fluids, in that, two types are there thick soap, tropic, and rheopactic fluid. So, in the thick soap tropic, temperature will be higher and mu will be lesser, then n is less than 1, beta is not equal to 0. Then examples are like the enamels, gels and colloids. Here it is also known as the pseudoplastic time dependent fluids. Then the second one is rheopactic fluid. For that mu is higher and T is also higher. Here mu for viscosity as you all know. Then lubricants and solidify when shaken. Then examples are like gypsum paste, then printer inks, and it is also known as time dependent dilatant fluids. Then there are two diagrams are there. First one is the tau versus du by dy, and the second one is mu versus temperature. Then the next topic is surface tension sigma t. Here direction of sigma t is always perpendicular to the line on which it is acting and tangential to the surface. Then sigma t always on the free surface and on 1 meter surface if 7 gram is equal to surface tension then surface tension of water is equal to 0 0.072 Newton per meter. And here capillary action is there first one is capillary rise for that the equation will be h is equal to 4 sigma into cos theta by rho gd here theta less than 90 degree for water then capillary fall theta greater than 90 degree here h is equal to minus 4 sigma cos theta by rho gd here to use this equation when liquid surface supports the another fluid of density rho b then vapor pressure p mean is always less than pv for forming the bubbles then here for cavitation p in greater than p atomic then one note is there delta p is equal to p in minus p out then delta p is equal to 2 sigma t by d for liquid jet then delta p is equal to 4 sigma by d for liquid drop and Delta P is equal to 8 sigma by D for soap bu air bubble in the water is also considered as the liquid drop. Now the second topic is fluid statics. In that first one is the basic laws. First one is hydrostatic law. In the static fluid, the pressure increase with the depth in the direction of gravity. P is equal to rho gs. The equation is for that. Then second one is Pascal's law. Px is equal to Py is equal to Pz which is equal to P. Then third equation for Bernoulli's equation P by rho g plus v square by 2g plus z equal to constant. Now the pressure measurement is there. First one is for the barometer. It shows the atmospheric pressure and P is equal to scalar quantity. Then 1 bar is equal to 10 raised to 5 newton per meter square and 1 mp is equal to 10 bar. And here P absolute is equal to P gauge plus P atmosphere. Now the second one is the piezometer which is used for small and positive pressure measurement. Then manometric liquids should have high density in the piezometer. And you can use the equation of S1 H1 is equal to S2 H2 where S is equal to relative density. h is equal to height then the third one is forces on the submerged body here first one is the horizontal position f is equal to rho g into h bar into a here h star is equal to h bar then vertical position f is equal to rho g into h bar into a then h star is equal to h bar plus ig upon a into h bar for vertical position then third one is for inclined position f is equal to rho g h bar into a and i is equal to i naught minus a into h bar 
then h star is equal to h bar plus ig into sin square theta upon a into h bar. Here sin theta is equal to h by x which is equal to h bar by x bar which is equal to h star by x star. Then after gm is equal to i min upon epsilon minus bg and i is equal to bd cube by 12. Then third one is simple manometer for that it can measure the positive and negative height and d is very small. Then fourth one is for inclined single column manometer it is used for increase the sensitive vector by 1 upon sin theta. Then fifth one is inverted and u tube manometer it is used to measure liquid pressure only. Here S manometrics would less than S liquid here S for relative density. Now the forces on the curve plane. There are equations for that. First one is liquid is present above the curve surface. For that Fh is equal to rho g h bar into A which is equal to P H C G into A and f is equal to rho gb above the free surface fr is equal to under root f v square plus fh square then tan theta is equal to fv by fh then for liquid is present below the surface then fh is equal to zero and for the third one liquid on both the sides then fv is equal to m into g and f net is equal to zero you note that for cylinder and sphere, FR passes through the CG and CP. Then X bar is equal to A1, X1 plus A2, X2 by A1 plus A2. And F is equal to pi by 3 into rho r cube. Then FH is equal to 2 by 3 into rho r cube. Here H bar is equal to 4R by 3 pi. The next one is for buoyancy principle, FB is equal to rho g into V. Then P is equal to E raised to minus GZ by RT plus C. Then W is also equal to M into G which is equal to rho GB. Then in the stability there are three types are there. First one is the stable equilibrium. Then second one is unstable equilibrium. And the third one is neutral equilibrium. Then here these nodes are very useful for the gate examination because from this table so many times the questions were asked in the exam. First one is for completely submerged body. If B is above G, then the case is for the stable equilibrium. Then the second one is if G is below the B, then for unstable equilibrium. And if B is equal to G, then neutral equilibrium is there. So you can remember like wheel gates for that the stable equilibrium is there then the second one is for floating body if m above g then stable equilibrium is there then if g below the m then unstable equilibrium is there and for neutral equilibrium m is equal to g here for the stable equilibrium gm greater than zero then for unstable equilibrium gm less than zero and for neutral equilibrium gm is equal to zero then there is the concept of time period oscillation of ship. Then t is equal to 2 pi into under root k square by g into gm, where gm is equal to metacentric height. And for general passengers, gm should lower and t should higher. Then for military purpose, gm should higher and t should lower. Because in the general passengers, more comfort should be there and for the military purpose more stability should be there then there is one example for the finding the value of metacentric height here gm is equal to 0.5 so you can say that the stable equilibrium is there then there are some equations for the stokes theorem then after the Joukowsky's theorem and the orthogonal streamline and equipotential line here these two equations are very important dx by v is equal to minus dy by u and dy by dx is equal to minus u by v and the multiplication of the slopes are minus 1 then the third one is fluid kinematics for that the first topic is Lagrangian approach here in this approach particle or system approach is there 
then particle oriented approach then v is equal to function of x y z and t and in the lagrangian approach then in the eulerian approach first one is the control volume approach then position oriented approach and v is equal to function of x y z and t here XYZ is not the initial position in the Lagrangian approach, it should be the initial position. Then streamlines are there, it is the imaginary line in the flow such that the velocity of all the particles on that line at a given instant is tangential to it. Then properties for the streamlines are, it cannot intersect each other at the same time. And the second one is flow cannot cross the streamline. Then second one, then second one is for stream tube. Stream lines makes a loop from each point and then it makes the tube is called the stream tube. Then fourth one is the path line. You can say that the path of a single particle over a period of time and it represents the history on footprints of a fluid particles then the next one is strict line for that it is the line obtained by the joining series of particles which sequentially passed through the same point and notice there for steady flow d rho by dt is equal to zero and streamline is equal to path line which is equal to strict line then sixth one is the timeline it is the line between then the sixth one is timeline it is the line obtained by joining a set of the adjacent particles which have marked at the same instant and it is used to visualize the velocity profile in the flow then after there are some equations are there first one is for steady flow it is related to the time and initial position then thus uniform flow which is related to the space and position of the eighth one is the incompressible flow for that two equations should be satisfied first one is del dot v bar is equal to zero and the second one is del square into phi is equal to zero then for the eight rotational flow del cross v bar is equal to zero and del square psi is equal to zero these four equations were asked so many times in the examination from this chapter. Then there is continuity equation is there. Del into rho into v bar plus del rho by del t which is equal to zero. Then for steady flow, del into rho into v bar is equal to zero. Then incompressible steady flow, del dot v bar is equal to zero. And for incompressible unsteady flow, del dot v bar is equal to zero where rho equal to constant then for compressible and unsteady flow del into rho e bar plus del rho by del t is equal to zero then there is the streamline functions are there which is also very useful first one is u is equal to minus del psi by del y and v is equal to del psi by del x then if this condition is satisfied of del square psi is equal to zero then you can say that the flow is irrotational and for velocity potential function the equations are there first one is u is equal to minus del phi upon del x then v is equal to minus del phi upon del psi and w is equal to minus del phi by del z here it should satisfy the equation of del dot v bar is equal to zero and del square phi is equal to zero then you can say that the flow is incompressible flow and there are equations for the velocity potential function in the polar coordinates first one is ur is equal to minus one upon r into d psi by d theta which is equal to minus d phi by dr and u theta is equal to plus d psi by dr which is equal to minus one upon r into d phi by d theta then CO deformation is there first one is for CO strand epsilon v is equal to del y by del x plus del u by del y into del t then second one is CO strand rate epsilon v is equal to del y by del x plus del u by del y 
then third one is tau xy is equal to mu into del v by del x plus del u by del y then velocity gradients for that three equations are there then after angular velocity omega is equal to 1 upon 2 into del cross v bar and there is a topic of vorticity omega is equal to 2 into angular velocity bar and omega is also equal to del cross v bar e rotational flow omega is equal to 0 then fluid acceleration is there for that the equation of acceleration in the x-plane then acceleration in the streamline coordinates is also there an is equal to v square by r and as is equal to v into dv by ds plus dv by dt here as is for convective or adjective acceleration and an is for local acceleration then there are three equations for the acceleration in cylindrical coordinate system. Then after material derivative is there, d of t by dt is equal to u into del t by del x plus v into del t by del y plus w into del t by del z plus del t by del t. Then after volume dissolution rate for that epsilon v is equal to del dot v bar. Then here del x by u is equal to del y by v which is the equation for slope between the streamline and for equipotential so these are the main equations we have discussed it briefly from these equations only the questions were asked mostly in the gate examination and in the fluid mechanics you have to remember the lots of equations but most of them are very easy to remember so this is all about the first chart of the fluid mechanics in which we have discussed about the fluid properties then after the fluid statics and the last one is the fluid kinematics and in the second chart we will cover the fluid dynamics then after the laminar flow and the turbulent flow as well as the flow through the pipes.